Hi, I'm Nick van der Krieg from Building Point Australia, and thank you for joining me today for this demonstration of the connection browser within Idea Statica. We start off with a number of members and load combinations within the Idea Statica interface. We can see that we have a support at the base of the column in this model. We also have a number of members coming into the column, and there's no connections at this stage. And I've arrived at these details using fairly manual operations. Uh, there's a range of ways that these details can be developed. I've added members, I've added loads, I've perhaps copied members, made adjustments to the new version, the new copy, similarly with loads. So there's some nice quick tools there to help you build up the various details in the connection. And we see that for the column, we have a pitch of 90 degrees that establishes the verticality, of course. For M2, we have a direction of zero and a pitch of zero. For M4, there's a direction of 180 degrees. So the beginning of these members, these two beams and this diagonal bracing is at this end near the node. And we can see where that is using the wireframe view. And there's also a transparent view, which is very helpful for reviewing welds and so forth. But the idea today is to have a look at the connection browser. So first of all, I'll just illustrate how you might go about putting some connection details together in a somewhat manual fashion. And we could use the operation tool and select from a range of operations. Uh, so for M2 to the column, I, I want to have an end plate type connection. So I'll select that and happily it has selected M2 from a range of possibilities, but the details aren't quite what I had in mind. So I could select the various details here, the dimensions from the top of the flange up and so on. I can make some adjustments or I can start off with a pre-designed feature. I'll right click on it, that end plate operation and select pre-designed to an extended version of an end plate. And I get some details which are closer to what I would like, but still not quite right. Again, I could make some adjustments to the dimensions, I push that top up a little bit, and uh, perhaps uh, with the bolts, I want to introduce an extra bolt at 150 millimeters higher than the previous one. So I'll enter that. So it's an, another bolt set and so forth. So I could continue doing these types of things. I need to add some gusset stiffeners and some additional details to connect this brace here. Perhaps I would like to use a stub operation and weld it to the top of the beam and to the end plate, you know, a whole range of details. And then I recall that I've done that before and I want to make use of that, that work that I've invested previously for a different connection. So what I'll do is delete that operation. I can, of course, clear all my operations if I have many. It's a quicker way to do it. And I'll open up a previous connection that I've fully detailed in that type of fashion. And again, I could have achieved these details in a range of ways. I could have used the manual operations or I could have imported uh, these connection details from Tecla Structures or another modeling package where the various details will be complete. And uh, of course, it makes it a lot quicker within Idea Statica. And I noticed that my members here are, are slightly different uh, these are slightly smaller, typically, uh, compared to the connection details that I want. And the brace angle is a little different as well, but that's fine. Uh, I set this up to allow for a degree of uh, change in the connection detail. So, for example, this widener here, I've got two wideners, uh, in fact, in the same location, and one is cut to the, the top of the stub operation, that's the universal column, the short length of it up into the splice. And I have essentially a, a repeat of that plate in the same position, but this time it's cut to the bottom flange of that stub operation. So because of that sort of detail, it means when I change the angle of the bracing member, the, the stub moves and these cut operations move as well. So uh, that uh, is quite a handy way to uh, set these types of details up. Consider the variation that you might have if you want to repeat this detail. 
and use that sort of method. The stiffener here could have been set to a 3D position with respect to the node. So it could have been set up as a, a plate with respect to uh, 3D coordinates, but instead I used it as a widener to the web of this beam. So if this beam changes in size, we'll make it a slightly bigger size. Go to a 530UB like that. Then the widener moves up and other details are reasonable. We, of course, might have to make some adjustments to uh, bolt positions and uh, other things like this, particularly if the, uh, the stub uh, comes in and intersects or fails that bolt. So there's a, a range of things like this, though, that can be done to build flexibility into your setup. So uh, another thing that was also quite handy was uh, setting up the stub member like this. And this has been set up actually as a doubler with respect to the diagonal member. So that means when I change the angle of this member, that the stub moves. And similarly, the plates have all been set up referencing these members, of course, you know, sitting on the flange, uh, sitting on the web plates. And uh, we have a, a double web plate, by the way, just for interest. So that's what I suggest, I guess. It's uh, one of the key things with uh, setting up connections that you're going to utilize later because you're very likely to have some slightly different details, sizes and angles and so forth of members. And you try to build up your details that uh, will suit uh, some variation. Okay, so what we need to do uh, to be able to copy all of these details into a different connection uh, essentially use this as a template, is to use the publish option in the connection browser. Another thing to, to consider, I guess, when you want to repeat the use of these uh, connection details is what components, what parts of this connection do I want to utilise? And in fact, I don't want to utilise the website plate to a beam here. I may not have a beam in that location. So what I'll do is deactivate that so you just select something in that connection and you can either right click delete it or just untick it like that which effectively means that operation is no longer there and similarly this member I don't want that member saved away in the template either and also the stiffness of course we could leave those in but they're very easy to introduce later on we can simply select a stiffener operation and uh, adjust its position and details very easily so I'm also going to take out the stiffeners that I've used in this design previously. So getting closer to a bare bones type connection detail, I, I have uh, everything now that uh, I want to save away in the template showing in this connection. And the idea is to simply publish this connection and you call it something. We'll call it a, a brace to end plate connection with a double cheek plates that uh, relates to the, the web plate, I, I guess, there, and the bolts on each flange. And right now, we can only publish it to the private user data set uh, very soon, and this should be within uh, a month or so, April 2022, we'll be able to publish to the company data set and allow sharing by the cloud to others in our company. Any user who is listed in the customer portal for the company should be able to access templates developed by others and shared using the, uh, the company data set. So that publishing process was successful and I'll move that connection away. And right now, if I look at the connection manager, I'll see that connection there along with a few others that I've published previously, but that's the new one that I've just published. But in the other file that was already open, I may not see that, that same new connection. It needs refreshing in a sense. So I'll close this, I'll save if necessary, this file and close it. So now when I've opened it up again, the connection browser should have refreshed. I should now see the, uh, the new connection detail that uh, I want to utilize. Okay, and now we select the propose operation and 
I saved that particular connection with a beam, a column and a brace. I've got an extra member here and so the current arrangement doesn't show me any connections, uh, either built-in Ideostatica ones or those from my private collection or company ones. So there's a couple of options here. One is I could close this dialog box, untick M4 right now, and then come and try it again, and I should see some connections. But this selection tool, and this is really the key aspect of the new connection browser, is you can apply connection details, apply templates that have been developed for particular parts of a larger connection perhaps. So I want to apply a template from a particular section or to a particular selection. So we select that option, select the selection tool, select a member, hold control down, select another member and then control down again uh, with another member and finally the selection tool to complete that selection process. And now we see a range of connections. Uh, three of these are built-in Ideostatica ones, and the fourth one is the connection that I've saved uh, a few minutes ago. And I want to apply that, of course, and it gives me a few options in terms of bolt sizes. Uh, by the way, if I didn't like the uh, one of those two options, I select plus and I can pick from the full list, but I, I want M20. And I also want a 200 UC46 as the, the stub member. And there it is, it's applied that connection. And despite the fact that this was a potentially a different size member, this is a larger column than I used uh, initially. And this member uh, could have been at a different uh, angle. And I can still change the angle, of course. And as previously discussed, by setting things up to allow for changes in details like this, you get something with a lot more flexibility and you don't have to make quite as many changes when you've brought that in. What I might do is move that bolt up a bit because of just the, the geometry and the, the details. The, that bolt at 155 millimeter spacing above the flange is a bit close to this member here. So, you know, I would make that uh, uh, potentially a bigger spacing like that. We could try that, or maybe we could even go to something like 65, or if there was enough room in there, if this was a little bit steeper, perhaps we could you know, put the bolt in there. So, of course, it's entirely up to us. We uh, need to come up with something that's going to be practical and work structurally. So we can, of, of course, review all of these details and make changes, and we can continue in the same vein with other parts of the connection. So just showing another operation here or another possibility, I can right-click on a member, connect to, select the member I want to connect to, and it brings up the connection browser again. And so for that current combination of members, uh, I see a large range, uh, mostly built-in connection types. And I'll pick the website plate and again, the type of uh, detail or the type of bolt that I want. And it comes up with the detail. That's not very close to what I want. So again, I would use the pre-designed facility and uh, perhaps uh, change the uh, location of that. And just like all of these other things, I can change the details there, the bolt spacings, the uh, you know to suit my preferred preferences, or I could have used a built-in template, just like I did with the diagonal and the end plate to establish my details. So that's it. Of course, normally we would continue on with calculation and a review of the results, but really today was about uh, showing the use of the connection browser, and it's already very good, but it's going to get even better quite shortly. Thank you very much.